Hi and welcome back to this Cyber Panel tutorial series. In the last video, I showed you how to how to add a new user with pseudo privileges, and we were using Party. So in this video, let's see how we can set up SSH keys to log into our server. That will improve security for our server, especially once we disable root login and we also disable password login. So this video is intended for you if you are a Windows user and you want to use Party for for managing your server. I did something like that a while back for CentOS 7 and I'm going to use the same steps that I used for CentOS 7 for my CentOS 8 server. So I'm just going to search for that here and I can search for CentOS 7 and I know the article when I see it. So let's see. Yeah, this is the one, Voltra tutorial. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here. Okay, so we are from here. We want to add SSH keys. From where it says that you're going to add SSH keys. So we need to open PartyGen. So you saw me install Party and we downloaded Party and installed Party, which has everything we need. Okay, so if you didn't watch that video, go back a step and then watch that video. So in this video, let's generate our SSH keys and start using them. So to generate your SSH keys, you're going to need to open PartyGen. What you need is a private key and a public key. The private key will be on your computer and that's the one you're going to use to log in via Party. And then the, the public key, we're going to add that to our server. And then once it is on our server, we can use the private key on our computer to log in with that. Right, and you're going to see how to do all that in this video. So let's go ahead and generate our public and private key. So let me search for PartyGen. And just come and open PartyGen. So let's generate a key. Let's click on, let's click on generate and just you can just play around with your mouse to generate the key uh, on your on your computer like i did and of course you want to make sure you add a key phrase so this means that if somebody gets your private key they will not be able to use it to log into your server without knowing the private key that you use here so make sure you add a key phrase this is like a password for your private key this is also very important make sure you add this for the security and i'm going to add one as well Confirm the passphrase and as soon as you do that you can save your public and private key okay so as for the as for the as for the public key this is our public key I'm not going to do anything like saving it I'm just going to leave it there but I can save it I can save it as well but let me just save the private key first this is the one that's more important now so I'm going to save and i can save it i can save it here on my desktop so let me just do Control shift n to create a new folder and i can call this i can call this new server and then give your private key a name something that at least even if you have many keys you can recognize this key and know it is for which server so for this i'm going to call it cyber panel windows just save now your private key is saved so the next step is for us to add to add this public key so if i click in there i can copy the entire thing but you're going to come to that let's see if you're still logged in on party so from the last video we were logged in from the last video we were logged in let's see if you're still logged in i'll just do clear i will do clear to clear the screen i will come back onto my browser here so i've generated the key i've saved the key what i need to do now is is to yeah you can also save the key just copy the key and save it in in a notepad or notepad plus plus file dot txt file you can copy that and save that in 
as your public key i mean and now the next thing i want to do here is let's log in we already logged into the server so i just need to make this directory i don't know if this directory is in our server so before i continue with all this the first i need to log out i need to log out of my server because from now on everything you do you're going to need to do with the new user that you've created we're not going to do it with the root so let me just log out completely and then i'm going to log in again so let me just do exit to log out and then i will do exit again to log out of root and let me open party once again and we're going to log in using the new user that we we created so i'll open up party and just put that somewhere there and this is a server we're working with now we want to log in as new user 2020 enter the password all right so from now on everything we do we are going to use this user so we can just see we can just check if this file already exists or do we need to create it this one as a search if does this directory exist okay i don't see i don't see the ssh anywhere here so i probably i have to create it so let me create this one sudo yeah copy so now if we do the above command we should see ssh the folder has now been added and then we're going to do nano we're going to use nano to edit the authorized key inside here so it, it doesn't exist but it's going to get created when we run this and then i will paste in that enter and now we are editing using nano nano is an editor that you can use inside of your linux inside of the linux environment so what i need to copy is this let's go back in there in partygen you drag it here and i will put my i will put my cursor at the very first at the very first character there before the very first character and then i will scroll all the way down to the last bit of this character and then i will copy select click on the last end here to select the entire thing and then i will come back into party and i will paste this in here so remember in party if you want to paste you just do you just do right click and it's going to paste it okay if you are using party on ubuntu on linux i don't know whether you are able to whether you are able to paste anything all right so once we've once we've pasted in our private our public key this is our public key we're going to do control x Control x and then y to accept the changes we've made to this file and then enter and that's it so we've added our public key there now the next thing we need to change we need to change the permissions for that okay change this is going to modify the permissions for this and the permissions for this so i want to do this in one line so i'm going to copy this and i want to run both of them in one line i'm just going to copy and paste that and then i will do two ampersands 
So this is something you can do to join to to even multiple commands on Linux. Just do two ampersands and it's going to combine. And then I will copy this one as well. Paste and then enter. All right, now permissions for these have been changed. Now, the next thing is, let me change the ownership for the new user that I've created. So for this, I, I need to probably put it somewhere else so that I can edit these things I don't want. I don't want to type on, I don't want to type on party. I can come here, I will copy this. So to copy anything on party, just select it and then do left click. So I'm going to paste, paste, paste. So change this with the user that you created in the last video. So I will paste that in there by right clicking and then enter. And now we are done. So we are ready to log in. So to log into your server, just open up Party once again. So for me, I'm just going to close this and then open Party. So now this is how to log in on Party using your SSH. Let me just leave that there. Maybe there's some errors. Let me log in using SSH. Now I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to load this. Okay. Just load it. Don't do anything else. Just load it. And then let's come down to SSH. And then here under op, here under op, you need to select the private key. Okay. So the key was saved under desktop and then it was under a new folder. What was the name of the folder? New server. And then this is our private key. So I'm going to double click on it. And, and I don't want to always do that every time I want to log into my server. Every time I want to log into my server. So what I'll do is I'll save this. I will go back into sessions and I, have, I already have this loaded, so I'm just going to click here to save it, okay? And once I do that, I can open, and it will ask me to log in as the SSH key was not, was not added for root. We need to log in as the user we created, and for me it was new user 2020. Enter, and then the passphrase. You remember the first the passphrase? Use that here. So this is a passphrase that you created. That is a passphrase that you created here on on party. So you can see everything has been successful. So I can just I can just go ahead and close that. So you can see that you have set up SSH on your server. And now you can log in via SSH. So the next thing that you're going to do to end this section for Windows is I'm going to log in again via party. And then I'm going to remove root. I'm going to remove the root login. I'm going to disallow root login. I'm also going to disallow login via passwords on my server. So if you want to log in, you must have my private key. Okay. So that is pretty much everything that we are going to cover on this section for the windows guys after that i'm going to start doing i'm going to start doing tutorials for linux on ubuntu and then after that we can all start installing cyber panel so let's just see if our sudo is working fine and i can do that by testing if i can update the server sudo update and add the password for this user. All right, so everything is working fine. So let me just go ahead and log out and we're going to log in once again in the next video.
So in this video, you've seen how to set up SSH on your CentOS 8. And I followed the same guide that I used on my CentOS 7 tutorial. And that is also available on, you, on YouTube. You can find it somewhere on my channel on YouTube. If you just search, you'll find it. So this is what I used and you can come to this link. If I don't add this link in the description, remind me and I will add them and I will add it there for you so that you can use it. I will see you in the next video when we disable root login. So I think that is also here. Is that here? Let's see. So that is here. We are going to log in and then we're going to, we're going to remove password, password authentication and root login so that people don't log into our server. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll configure time. And this is also important just so that your server can be in line with your time. So if you're in a different time zone, you need to change your server to your time zone. So I'll see you in the next video when we continue from here. If you have any questions or you're stuck on anything, especially if you're new to this stuff, just let me know and I will see how to help you. See you in the next video.